Guys, welcome in to my college football week number 11 upset alert where I put certain teams on potential upset alert for this coming football Saturday, which is tomorrow. Uh, so we've got a few different games I want to talk about, starting with a game that, you know, not a lot of people, not a lot of casual people are thinking about. Notre Dame, currently, they were minus 17. That line has dropped to about 15 and a half. And, and guys, I completely understand why uh, I am concerned for Notre Dame. It's very important for a team like Ohio State that Notre Dame keeps winning because you want that you know win to be a top 25 win. I do think Notre Dame gets the job done just barely. There's a very good spot for Navy plus the 15 and a half. The over under in this game is also plummeted. It's down to 39 and a half from 42. Guys, the major issue I'm seeing right now, Notre Dame going on the road or like at a neutral site game, they can't throw the ball. They have a, an extremely weak pass attack, so they're kind of one-dimensional. They run the ball. When you take a look at their blowout victory over Clemson for as good as it was, it was a little bit of smoke and mirrors. There was a kind of a fluky, long pick six that totally changed. It was a 14-point swing in the game. It wasn't like Notre Dame had 500 yards of total offense, guys. I'm just saying. Um, so if you want to add context to a game like that, Navy, on the other hand, they hung in there against Cincinnati. They're keeping the game lower scoring, ball control, triple option, run the ball. And the fact that this is a noon game, you know, low energy, it just has all the makings where we're sitting there and we're like, how is this game, you know, three to three with five minutes left in the second quarter? Everyone's surprised, but really we can all see this coming, guys. We can see it coming. It's because Notre Dame has an extremely weak pass attack. And it's not like their running game is all that strong either. And guys, I really don't want to rip Notre Dame to shreds because I want Notre Dame to win. I, I like Notre Dame. I was one of the only people that stood by Notre Dame after they lost to Marshall and Stanford and said, no, this team's actually better. People are underrating them. And, and they got a big win at Clemson. But guys, I am concerned for Notre Dame in that spot. Next, we have Liberty traveling to UConn. Uh, there is some weather in this game, possibly some rain showers. It's a noon start time. And guys, UConn, they've got momentum. They're playing well. They love playing low-scoring, close games. I've actually got them winning this game outright. Um, there's kind of a narrative that's been creative that Liberty is underrated considering they're still not ranked by the playoff committee. But guys, if you look at the context of Liberty and their struggles with FCS Gardner Webb about a month ago. This team is very overrated. They beat an Arkansas team who was not inspired at all last week by two points. I like UConn. They're fighting for a bowl. It's a breakthrough season for them. They're at home. It's a noon window. Give me UConn to cover the four, the 14 and a half point spread. It's just so attractive to bet the home team plus the 14 and a half because it opens that window. Let's say it, you know. 28 to 14, you're covering. You know, that's pretty crazy to think about. Uh, 31 to 21, you're covering, something like that. So my one concern for UConn would be their offense is pretty challenged, but they do have a solid defense this year, and they are at home, and there could be some rain. So there's a lot going for UConn in this game to potentially at least keep it close or maybe even uh, pull off the upset. I like them. The next game we have is LSU traveling to Arkansas. So guys, this sets up perfect, and I know there's a narrative out there, Brian Kelly does not lose games where he's the favorite. It was true at Notre Dame, but I'm telling you guys, I think the situation with LSU, they got that big road win last week, totally emotional over Alabama, they're riding high, now they've got to play in the noon window against an Arkansas, I think it's 11 a.m. Central there, against an Arkansas team who... Yes, they're bad on defense, especially run defense, but this isn't like some pushover. It's not like LSU is going on the road at Vanderbilt here. This is a legitimate team with a solid veteran quarterback in KJ Jefferson to where if it's close late, we could be looking at a problem for LSU, and I do have this game as an upset. I think LSU is very volatile. I do not trust them at all. I understand the narrative surrounding Brian Kelly. All he does is win when he's the favorite. They're around three, three and a half point favorites, depending on which book you look at right now. 
but it just feels like LSU. They got that huge emotional win. We've got kind of a suspicious three-point spread. How is it only three points? LSU just beat Alabama. Guys, Vegas knows what they're doing. They understand Arkansas probably will win this game. It's based off of probability. It's based off of LSU coming down to earth after an emotional win. I totally understand it. Uh, and I like Arkansas. Next, we have Louisville traveling to Clemson. So this is a 3.30, I believe the 3.30 ABC game. Guys, this is just me not really thinking Clemson is all that good. And they're sitting at 8-1 right now. And I just, I, I don't think they're really that good of a team. Um, their offense, it seems like we go into every game waiting for Dabo Sweeney, whether it's the second quarter or the third quarter, to pull DJ Uwe Lungile, and that's just not a rep recipe for success. Louisville, on the other hand, very similar to Arkansas, where they've got a dual threat, bigger quarterback, kind of a an, an inconsistent team. One of the interesting trends we've seen with Louisville, they've got a very elite pass rush, surprising enough. Two elite pass rushers, they're going to pressure Clemson a lot, they're going to shut down Clemson's run game. And guys, one of the other things, Clemson really doesn't have any elite receivers right now. I know they have really high-ranked recruits, but none of them have really stepped up. It seems like Clemson's offense is in a similar position, a &M, Texas A&M's offense is, where they just don't have an off, a young offensive innovator. You're talking about Jimbo Fisher, you're talking about Dabo Sweeney. Those guys this offseason need to hire younger offensive mind coaches. It seems like their offenses are stuck 10 years ago. And I do like Louisville. Again, this is mainly because I just don't think Clemson is, good as, is as good as their 8-1 record. I like Louisville to win that game outright. Next, we have Army traveling to Troy. So a few different models have influenced me to pick Army in this game. There's actually a ton of people. A lot of the public is on Troy minus the 9. And I totally understand it. Troy has been so solid this year. They're so good on defense. The reason I wanted to bring this game up Guys, there's a great value right now on the under. I believe it opened at 46. I told everyone, go under. I think it's down to 44 and a half or maybe 45. It just feels like you're talking about an Army team that loves to run the ball, of course, with the triple option. And Troy, they're, you know, they have a very, very average to below average offense and an extremely above average defense. So just the overall matchup in this game tells me it's going to be a lower scoring game, maybe a 16 to 13, even like a 23 to 13 type game. If you're talking about the wiggle room of having the over under at around 44 or 45, it also gives you the advantage to where you know let's say Troy puts up 28 points 28 to 13 the under still hits there so I like the overall value here with the under it, it never made sense to me I, I would have set the over under at the, on this game at around 42 points personally so when I saw it open at 46 I loved the under and and to me there's great value on Army in this one I know Army has been very inconsistent but um, in general, when you're facing an offense like Troy and you can ball control it and really limit their possessions, I think Troy's going to have a real problem scoring. Army certainly as well because Troy has a really good defense, but I will take the under. That is a nice little 330 matchup. We'll have to see if Troy can continue their good season. Next, we have Southern Miss traveling to Coastal Carolina. So Coastal Carolina starting quarterback Grayson McCall is officially out for, I believe, the whole season. And this line has shifted drastically. It's down to Southern Miss plus the five. Funny story about this. Even before I knew about Grayson McCall's injury, I was going to pick the upset. So now I'm really going to pick the upset. I'm really going to lean into it. The Southern Miss team is a solid squad. Coastal Carolina, we have no clue what we're going to get. We can only speculate with the backup quarterback starting. Um, I, again, you know, you probably want to steer clear of betting on a game like this, but it just seems like plus five is decent value for a team that's solid. They are on the road, uh, but I would not be scared about the fact that Coastal Carolina is eight and one. Coastal Carolina for the past two years has done this where they've had just a, a very easy schedule overall that has really uh, coaxed them to the 8-1 and one record. So I don't think they're nearly as good as their record. This could be a correction game with their backup quarterback where, you know, they're not as good as their record, so they'll lose this game to Southern Miss. I also think Southern Miss is a little bit better than their record. Maybe a little parody game going on here with Southern Miss winning 38-24. to 24. A little bit of an aggressive score, admittedly. 
Next, we have TCU at Texas. So the big surprise here, uh, Texas is seven-point favorites. And originally, I actually had this game at 35-34 to with a Texas victory. But thinking about it, the way Vegas sets these lines, the way they tend to happen, guys, it's very likely that, likely that believe it or not, Texas is actually going to cover this spread. And win this game 45-34 to or something like that. When you look at TCU, the games that they've played... They're, they've struggled against multiple below average teams, Texas Tech, Oklahoma State, games they probably should have lost. They've been losing in the third quarter in virtually every game over the past two months. It seems like their run is just about done in my opinion. So I'm going to take Texas to win this game and we know the value. If you look at TCU, they're ranked fourth. Texas, I believe, is 18th. They're seven point underdogs. They can at least keep it within seven. Well, guys, we see this over and over again. The best value loses. We saw it last week with Texas being two-and-a-half-point road favorites over Kansas State when Kansas State was ranked significantly higher than them, and Texas totally controls that game and wins easily and covers. Very similar situation here, in my opinion. I will back Texas in this spot. I think, T again, TCU, very interesting situation for TCU, even if they lose to Texas. They could win out and get a rematch with Texas in the Big 12 championship game. That would be great for their playoff resume to avenge that loss. So there's definitely a conversation to be had. But I did just check the strength of schedule metrics. TCU has the hardest remaining strength of schedule. They're at Texas this week. They're at Baylor next week. It is not an easy road for TCU. We're all kind of wondering, will they make the playoffs or not? And that's actually from a different week. So, guys, that is going to do it for my official college football week number 11 uh, upset alert predictions. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description. I'm, of course, the Depressed Ginger. Thank you for watching.